What's up, party people? We're here with Nick and Joss, and today's episode we're talking about the cutthroat side of innovation. So, what is cutthroat side of innovation? It means the harder decisions that are made in really innovating in business, the things that no one likes to talk about, about firing people, about making tough decisions that are necessary, popular, and really don't fill you with the warm and fuzzies. So, it's a little right, bit different. That's... Yeah, let's let's talk about the the the, the tough things to do today. Right, so maybe we should start with an example um, of uh, innovation uh, that if you or, or the resistance of innovation or, or the or the or, or not wanting to embrace change and innovation, how can you that can get that can get you killed? So let's look at uh, the taxi industry and uh, and and the the ride sharing market or the Uber or Ubers or the Uberfication. Of taxi services, uh, which is uh, you know Uber and Lyft and whatever else there is out there, and and how they basically just have killed uh, uh, a industry that was bloated, bureaucratic, and didn't think uh, they could be challenged. I mean, to to think that a, a number plate or a medallion uh, is worth uh, you know up to a million dollars. In a, in a in a in a market where the only barrier entry was uh, was the one imposed by by uh, the the industry or, or some government uh, regulation, um, which then fed into higher prices and and no need to innovate as, as a result. Customers end up with uh, smelly taxis and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can't uh, yeah a regular you monopoly. Feel Do you feel invincible? In that, in those yeah, correct. Yeah, well, there's there's no need to. To, to innovate, there's no need to to really care what the customer wants, and and I don't know, I I'm not no idea how this started, but I'm, I'm guessing you know the guy who started Uber, whoever the, whatever the first ride sharing uh, product was or app was, was basically came out of a taxi, you know, awfully pissed, <laughs> awfully, <laughs> awfully angry, and said, "I'm going to do something about this." And I, I I'm, I'm guessing, I I don't know, I don't mean, do you know if there's a backstory to this, but I'm guessing it's some angry guy or gal. Uh, deciding to come out, go out there and, and make an app to to challenge uh, the the status quo. That's how it always starts. Yeah, I, th- I think there's Sil- Silicon guys that you know, Lyft and Uber started around the same time, or Lyft may have started earlier than Chase or Travis. Travis, I think he right. did his first round of funding and then got major funding in later iterations of that. Yeah, and no, even I, the, I, in that story itself, the fact that they had the proximity to investment money. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a topic for another one, uh, another podcast. Um, and so, how do we deal with with, with innovation? All right. So the one way is, uh, if your organization, okay, okay. So let, is this being framed as the way how would you save, how would taxis have saved themselves? A lot of these guys who, like you mentioned, they got one of the guys before this podcast had a billion invested into it, and he. Yeah, yeah, he had like 10,000 medallions, and I think, uh, in New York City, and the medallions were worth like, uh, a million dollars each, so there's a billion dollars. And, uh, and literally, I think in about 18 months post, uh, Uber, one of these guys opening up in New York City, uh, he was, uh, he was broke. Okay. Or he had to you know, file for bankruptcy or whatever, because I'm guessing the debt he had, uh, borrowed against, uh, against that. So, you know, that's another lesson for, for not being able to predict the future, where even the bank thought, uh, this was as safe as, uh, as a, as, a, as a house, I guess, which is why they lent, uh, or whoever they were, the, the, Such a large the, round. yeah, to, to have, to have lent, yeah. I mean, in Australia, like, I mean, we have the same situation here where people could, could, uh, could borrow against, uh, their number plates. Yeah, it's been uh, an Uber driver recently. He, Uber driver, security guys. I think Uber's in the securities. They'd, him and a few friends had picked up a, one of the licenses or whatever they're called, medallions. I think they call the same yeah. thing in Australia. Yeah. But, after buying it, it just dropped in value, so they can't. Even, it's not even worth for them to sell it. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, so here we got a, an industry that was uh, bloated. Uh, someone comes out of nowhere and, and takes them out. Uh, and so, so if you if you're a consumer monopoly, then then you do buy yourself some protection because you're providing a, a phenomenal service at a good price. Where that, you're chosen rather than forced. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's. It's an important distinction about about monopolies. A, a consumer one exists because it's it's derived or comes from the market. And the reason why they're so dominant is because they're so good. Um, it's not because uh, you know government imposed a law upon it. Like for example, like Amazon, right? I mean, they're 
they're they're they're massive, um, and uh, but it's not like no one forces there's... you to go to Amazon. Exactly, yeah, you can go to I don't know Rackspace or whoever the hell it is, uh, or or uh, or any other supplier of books and retailing stuff. But people still go to Amazon is because they offer a, a great product uh, for a for a, at a at a great price, and so so there's no need for you to go elsewhere. Why did uh, why was uh, you know Zappos able to to become I don't know two billion dollars in sales or whatever they did uh, before they oh, got bought out? Perfect example in search and space. Google is a verb. Yeah, it's become synonymous right. with the internet search. There was other ones existing at the time. They had the opportunity, but Google exactly yeah yeah, yeah like inside dot com and like us and whatever else there was yeah and Google comes out of nowhere because. Uh, they didn't care about the advertiser. They cared about the customer, or they cared about the searcher, or their customer, which is the person using the the, the search engine. As a result, uh, decided to reward advertisers who gave uh, a better uh, a better service. outcome. Yeah. yeah, same thing. You know, MySpace. Uh, you know, the, uh, is, um, Facebook is not the first social media network. Um, similarly, uh, I'm sure you, we're gonna, probably going to see that in, in in the crypto space. Is that though Bitcoin looks to be the the winner mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, then it may very well be that it's not. There's, there's a crypto currently getting created by some kid in some garage somewhere, which is going to be the ultimate winner. So we don't know that. Let's get some so, topic of innovation there. There's two things to discuss. How do you innovate before someone else tries to take you over? And how do you innovate once there, if you are the tax industry and this, this newcomers come in, how do you stop the bleeding? Okay, yeah. Right, so l- let's let's break it down to a micro level, so people watching this can can uh, can actually uh, use some of this, or at least think about how they can use some of this. Uh, which is h- how to innovate at the at the micro level. Let's say you're a company with, let's say, 20 people, 30 people. Uh, what what do you do? Okay, well, one way around it is is to always uh, start projects or have projects uh, that uh, that have the potential to pay off. Uh, not a year from now or two years from now or three years from now. Now, most of those projects will fail, actually. But they also teach you what the what the future may potentially hold. And so you, you, you're buying, uh, you're buying uh, options on, on, on future outcomes. And that's one way around it. The other way would be to, if your business really works with stability, uh, then... You're not going to go in there and have uh, you know uh, some aggressive, uh, innovating type people sitting within the same organization because they, they serve two purposes. One is, is is stability to to care for current customers, and to just bring a, a bunch of people who are in some respects opposite of, of that, which is to go and break things and put them in the same office. You, you could create tension. So I, I, I'll that, that's a choice for. For, for the for the executives to make whether they should or should not do that, but the but the idea that that you can have uh, another division organize, or a, a a piece of the organization that is that is looking to cannibalize its the current one for the purposes of survival of the of the overall organization is is a great idea or like a, like a hit squad you know some 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 other uh, uh, some other part of the organization that is sitting on the side that is looking to break. Uh, and, and they're not looking to break the one just for the purpose of it, but they're out there seeking opportunities uh, or innovating or they, they're, they're investing in things or they're trying things that potentially will cannibalize the existing organization. But you'd rather do it on yourself than to have a competitor wipe you out totally. So I guess to go to the taxi industry would be if uh, the taxi industry had a small bunch of guys who were investing in, you know, this tech startup kind of a thing, or, or new apps, or some some way to innovate, and and use that as as a way to change the industry, would have been a good way in which the taxi industry could have evolved with technology and with the times and ex- and the expectations of their customers. But that wasn't the case. You've lost the sound. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. <laughs> All right. On mute. I guess an example that we can relate to there would be the Challenger brand. So I think some of the airlines do it, or Telstra does it with their Belong brand, where they're essentially competing against themselves. 
Yeah, no, they could be competing against themselves at the at one level. Or the other companion. one is, is 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 to is to serve a different market. Uh, different market. Serve, serve a different market segment. Correct. Yeah, which which the which the main one can't. Or, or it could be a, a just um, as a way to to not end up cannibalizing the current. So, say for example, uh, let's just get Qantas. Let's say let's say if, if Qantas is primary customer is, is full fee paying uh, they you know expect a certain type of uh, of, of, of service um, Qantas couldn't possibly offer you know cut price run for your seats <laughs> like uh, you know buy your own lunch uh, and that sort of a thing uh, because that would just turn its 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 main uh, customer base off so it's it's a different segment and so you come up with a, a totally new brand I call it Jetstar and and you let that compete with uh, with 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 uh, oh, there you with, go. Just uh, so like 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 Tiger and um, you know whoever else there was uh, I think Virgin some at some level and uh, who was the other one? Did we have four players at one point? I think one of them got beaten out of the market because he had Virgin Blue, yeah. which kind of failed. And then Virgin okay. came up with a new one. Yeah. So 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 that uh, that that would be one way around it. Uh, people do that in the in the toothpaste space. Uh, uh, you know the the high fashion brands do it in in for fashion. You know they'll have uh, they'll have your 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 Burberry or whatever for the for the top end, and then they'll come up with uh, with, with, with with cheap offshoots. A totally different name, of course. Uh, you know you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, tarnish the the, the brand it's name. Either, but they always invest in different brands within a in a segment. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so they have everything from your you know your your bottom of the range, but each one of them has a totally separate uh, name. Uh, totally separate, uh, you know, distribution. Totally separate, uh, you know, pricing. Totally separate manufacturing. Um, and and as a result, you know, it's it's a portfolio. It's a company that has a portfolio of uh, of brands to serve all kinds of market segments. Everything from the high end stuff, all the way down to the to, to the bottom end. So I guess that example is a little bit different in the sense that they're not. That's not really innovation. That's just coming up with uh, with different product offerings to to better serve a, a group of people. That your current product or current offers cannot um, serve, and so that's that's more of a market segmentation strategy. Is it also risk mitigation? Of... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you're 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 um, you you're not just a, just a one trick pony now. You know, you've got let's say if you've uh, if you're a company uh, with uh, with you know let's say 50 brands in in you know 20 30 different verticals, um, everything from online offline. Direct to consumer, you know, they, I think they even have like things like network marketing and stuff like that thrown in there, um, though they've never said that. Or, uh, kind no of, one really knows who you love it is yeah, unless, you're so, in the, unless you're in that business kind yeah, of space. Yeah. So, so, so as a result, you, you're so diversified, um, not from a sales perspective, product perspective, market segmentation perspective, that your your, your incomes are very stable and, and that shows up in in uh, in the share price or the or the valuations that these business that these companies enjoy. Uh, but but they're not one trick ponies. But they, at, but at the same time, when they realize they're starting to get cannibalized, when a startup will turn up, like uh, what's the what, what's the, the Dollar Shave uh, Club? Dollar Shave, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so they got bought by was it Procter and Gamble? Unilever? I can't remember PNG, who bought them PNG, out. But, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, they bought them out for that very reason. It's like come out of nowhere, some guy on a trolley <laughs> making a video. Um, and next thing you know, they they're worth a billion dollars. And, they're stealing all and the clients <laughs> where our customers going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. And so, so or at least some some well, segment, segment was, bit, yeah. was was taken away, or they were able to split them off. Well, it's a uh, but, thing of buying the talent as well, because they acquired this new way of marketing that they couldn't bring yeah, into their corporate that, culture. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And and that's that's uh, buying innovation. Uh, and, and from I guess from from the big company's perspective, uh, whether it be you know any one of the big large corporates, it makes a lot of sense. You know, like well, let let them beat each other up and see who the ultimate winner is, or see who a significant winner is, and then we'll just go buy them out. And and that that makes a lot of sense because if, if these companies were to go and do that themselves, um, they would probably lose because. As a as a an organization, they're just not geared for that kind of crazy innovation. No. Uh, and so, so in that case, your your innovation strategy would be: I'll just wait until you know someone's selling, you know, let's say at least you know a uh, hundred million dollars worth, or fifty million dollars worth, or X million dollars worth. So they prove themselves just, enough to show that they've got the capabilities to exist within the market, and then yeah, and, and, and then give you a bit of our power behind and. Guys, nuts. But the but the, but the payoff for, for the really big guys is that is that 
is that they would have distribution systems and supply chain management systems and all the other kind of optimizations that, that the big guys have, which that with the little guy doesn't. And so, so overnight, uh, you know what? It's uh, it's it's a massive win for these big guys because first they're buying an asset with uh, next to no risk, um, and uh, and then they and then they overlay their their capability, which is optimization uh, and scale uh, to to these. Uh, well, the <laughs> dollar shift club's not not small, but it's small in comparison to these really big ones. Uh, and and so once that comes in, uh, it just gets uh, you know expanded. Ability massive. scale becomes a lot faster because they've got access to new resources and ability to guess, yeah, extend but, markets etc. for their correct correct. Products. But just, just I guess just one caveat on that is uh, or, or is that oftentimes these things don't pay off. I, I don't know. You know, Procter and Gamble or Unilever's, uh, you know, uh, like capability or or, or how, how they are with with acquisitions, but generally speaking, you know, most 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 of these things don't pay off. Not because the company was bad, but because there's just there's just cultures, prior- Yeah, correct, correct. There's a massive clash of of uh, of, of culture uh, and a massive clash of of expectations and what was supposed to be done. Well, if you think about it from that guy's perspective, you know, they're they're worth a billion dollars. He's, he's gotten a big payday. Um, in some respects, I guess he probably doesn't care. Or maybe he does, I don't know. Uh, but the guy buying, who in charge of buying, you know, from Unilever's perspective or, or the, the big company's perspective, uh, yeah, he's he's done his deal, right? He's he's off to the next deal. And and it's left to somebody else to do the integration. And, uh, yeah, so so the, a, a lot of value is not, not extracted in most, at least in some of these cases. I don't want to say most, but at least in some of these cases. And, uh, and that, why? To to innovation is there's two ways of dealing with. One is you 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 have some portion of your investments uh, happening in in things that that are just turning up. So let's say if you're if you're an agency or a small marketing agency and the, your bread and butter comes from Facebook and Google, well I suppose you could have small amounts sitting in native ads, small amounts sitting in you know the, the new push advertising, the push sorry the push notification. Um, Services that are popping up, um, you could uh, you know start playing around with Twitter ads. You could start playing around with uh, you know. For uh, example, if you're, on, if you're doing MySpace as your primary marketing method as an agency, you're, you would have been kind of stuffed when that disappeared. When it, when it died, exactly. Yeah. So you need some exposure to that, um, uh, or or you could even have something things like you know starting to make make chatbots as a service for your clients, or starting to do. Uh, use of more data analytics as a way to add more value to the ad campaigns that you're running. And so it doesn't always have to be just another traffic source. It could be back in optimization, et cetera. Correct. Because, because the market's getting so fragmented and, and things are getting just so, so much more complex. Um, the, the clients or the marketplace isn't able to cope up with, with the pace of change. And that's like the whole Martech law thing is, is, is the pace of change is, is so rapid that that it's the it's the person who can cope with change that's going to win, not the one you know with the best strategy or the most amount of whatever. Uh, is 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 the pace of change is the is the is a real battlefield, not the not the competition okay. as such. So whoever keeps up with uh, change or whoever keeps up with with the new things that are coming up is is the guy who's or the girl who's ultimately going to win. But the capabilities also need to be jump. They need to be kind of like jump. Discontinuities, where where your capability is at this level, pace of change goes up here, and you need to catch up. And so, so, so that's where the whole hiring, firing, recruiting of the new blood that all comes in because the the existing team. Uh, I mean, you could, but it'll be very expensive for you that's to. That's where we're uh, getting to next because so far we're talking about fairly light stuff, innovate yeah. within or creating a challenge. Right, that's still fairly light. I think one of the best examples. The last century would be GE, their shift. We didn't mention yeah. about the book was really good here, the right timing with it, etc. But there was yeah. a very cutthroat element to hit Jack's takeover and yeah. management. Yeah, I style. think yeah, the, the bottom time ten percent or five percent, whatever it call every year, uh, would be would be. Uh, now I don't know if that's going to work in this day and age, uh, purely because the market has shifted. Uh, they were operating in. And still, uh, you know, I, I know they were doing semiconductors and stuff like that, so I don't want to say they were low tech, but it was still very much manufacturing 
that sort of thing. I think they, they did go into finance and stuff, but but I don't know if that really works with knowledge workers in terms of the the web type stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe it works. I, I, I haven't seen it being done. Uh, that's not to say it can't be done. Uh, but where you need to be careful of is... Is, is that an assumption that business overall now has really become a knowledge worker as your main asset? Yeah, correct. Yeah, because uh, the, the pace of change is so rapid. Um, you know, there's not a lot of... like mo- I mean... I guess within a few years, you know, you might have even have doctors being obsolete. So, so, so I think the, the professions are under threat. Uh, but, but the the more important point here is is how do you manage this 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 change? Because the business itself is is under threat. The pace of change is so rapid. I remember doing this presentation. Here's uh, here's probably an example. A lot of supermarkets are getting automated checkouts or self checkout. Yeah. So while, um, you know. The, the the that's a form of innovation the, itself that we don't see those gobs that yeah, are being created. Yeah, yeah. The, that's what, the twenty the, twenty odd <laughs> checkout chicks that are going through high school or whatever. Yeah, the uh, the, the dinosaurs in Australia have just have just put self checkouts. They've been around for a long time. <laughs> uh, while 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 Amazon is doing you know just pick the stuff and walk out. Buy a uh, so, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So well, well, while in Australia we've, we've just gotten self self uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? the self checkout uh, in in in, uh, in in the US they they're already walking out with the stuff. So so um, yeah, I didn't mean to just, buy Whole Foods. I meant buy from Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> so in some respects, we're uh, we're uh, we're we're kind of I don't know about two decades behind, um, but that's that's a function of, of of the of the space, right? And and no one expected Amazon to to open up in Australia, so now these guys have to have to catch up um, or, or, or or die. So so yeah, so that's that's uh, that's one look at uh, at an innovation example. Well, it doesn't, um, hasn't become a threat yet, but I think obviously Amazon has picked up their warehouses, which say they won't bring Whole Foods here next and. Correct. Bring correct. Their kind of technology correct. that they're unleashing in the states. Yes, that's correct. So um, now, so I guess to bring it back down to our uh, sort of audience of who wants to do this sort of thing is yeah, is to a couple of ways is have a have a small group of people or a person or two, or or if it's a very small business, then then the CEO who's who's looking at some things that are are not currently part of the offering that you're doing or or not part of the the, the strategy that you have and start. Adding those things in. So, if you're an ad agency, you could start, you know, you know, the inclusion of AI type tools uh, in your within your repertoire of skills, you know, chatbots and all that sort of thing, uh, as a way to supplement. Or we'll start developing uh, talent in house. Yeah, correct, correct. Start hiring uh, to, to 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 cater for that. Hiring, training, uh, yeah, the resources to make that a possibility. Correct, exactly, exactly, and that's 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 the only. In fact, it's, it's the only way to deal with it. I mean, the, what, what, there's uh, there's there's really not much else you can do except to to start. Um, it's the, the the important thing is not the is not the what you're going to put invest into is, is the fact that you have a framework for doing it, that you have some um, investment being made in future capability. You have some investment being made in capability that uh, that will turn up uh, in the future. Now, the the reality is that most of that's going to go nowhere because effectively that's how you know these things work. Is that most of these in, investments you're going to make will not result in um, uh, in, in in any wins actually. I, I, in fact, there'll be, be losses. But you need to look at it from a portfolio management perspective, where you know some of your investments will pay off by a lot, and most of your investments won't pay off at all, much like a venture capital list uh, does with their portfolio. So that's 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 what needs to be done, even at the micro level within within businesses. This is even from a risk management kind of point of view that if you are solely reliant on one channel as an agency, you put yourself a lot of risk. Should anything happen to that channel or any bad press? Yeah. Oh, well, in fact, uh, there's plenty of examples of that online. Like uh, I've, I've read when Facebook changed the algorithm for the organic search, a couple of publishers went dead. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, when when Google did the, you know Hummingbird and I don't know Panda and Penguin or whatever else there was, um, you know they, they that killed a whole bunch of businesses. I remember uh, a, a guy that uh, you know affiliate uh, ranking I, sites or whatever. Yeah, or affiliate ranking sites. Yeah, or, or, or you know uh, creating multiple duplicate pages all over the place to to get traffic. 
uh, into the black hat stuff. Or, or even, even what well, didn't have to be black hat, it was just the, the, the way that SEO was yeah, being, being done. Rewarded, I, but, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just that was what it was rewarded, so you play within, the, playing within what was working. Yeah, and, and that's why anyone, so, so say, let's say if you're an e-com business only relying on Facebook as, as their main traffic source, uh, that's awfully dangerous. You should, really should be in Google and maybe another one or two traffic sources and potentially, you know, one or two offline um, uh, traffic sources, uh, you know, maybe doing direct mail or, or postcards or whatever the heck it is. I, I don't know what, what would work for what, which business, but not exposing yourself to, to any one of these other things to do uh, is exposing yourself to, to being ruined, actually, or to die, basically. So... That's 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 the only way around this this uh, this issue is you need to have uh, made uh, uh, you know other investments and to have thought of uh, where where the market's moving and, and this is this is where it goes counter to the proven model like like uh, like one of the things we see at least in this in the, in the small to medium space is the, the proven system for getting traffic or the proven system for getting customers or the proven system uh, you need to have some bit of your money being invested in the unproven things because they're the ones that are going to be proven tomorrow because in some ways if it's proven then it's already dead sorry got market, market. mass market appeal sorry got yeah yeah because because yeah because essentially by the time it's proven it's already been arbitraged right like so it's already been used uh, so many times that's why it's proven so if it's already proven then 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 where is its value so i mean so its value has been somewhat uh, been diminished so uh, i actually you know Try and I actually run away from proven things because I'm like, well, if it's proven, then it's obviously obviously being used by everybody else. And why should the market reward you for just being a copycat? That's not that's not where the money is, the, the, or that's not where the where, where the where the bulk of your returns are. The bulk of returns are in is in stuff that is that is not popular. Is in is in stuff that no one else is doing. It's while well, everybody's you know it's old zigzag thing, right? Over zigging you go zag, and vice versa. So yeah, so so the so proven is 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 dangerous. I think, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but it's uncomfortable because nobody else is doing it. And so, because as as a social animal, we look for social proof, uh, you know, we look for, for, for validation, um, and that works counter because by the time it's validated, it's uh, it's already been uh, used. We want to say better, short thing, kind of things that work most Correct. people are looking for. Correct, when, when, when we, there are no short things. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'm not saying, you know, don't do it. The The answer is... Yeah, do it because you know what? If that's if that's what makes you you, you tick or work, then go for it. But also do things that are, are not proven. Also do things that are, are new, because that's Wait, where that's return. where that's where because that's what one of those things or or a small you know subset of those of those new things are what's going to become tomorrow's proven thing. And and so so but then by the time you get it, if it well by the time it's been labeled proven. Um, it's, a, it's a bit too late because the, the, the easy money is, is, is gone or the, or the quick money or the, or the big money is, is gone by the time it gets there. That's why like, like people are still selling courses on, on how to you know, be an affiliate, uh, you know, kind of affiliate riches or whatever, you know, where you, you know, buy some traffic on Facebook and Google and send it to an affiliate offer. I'm not going to say it doesn't work. Of course, it still does. You know, people are still doing it. But is it as lucrative as what it was in 2002? No, of course not. It's all the same you know? sort of green pastures that... It was whole because Correct. it's being gambled yeah. to a That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so, so trying something new um, is is the only way around it. Well, counterintuitive to popular knowledge. So that may yeah. be going back to basics and going back to sending a postcard. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, uh, or, or just seeing what else is happening out there, exposing is you know going to going to uh, industry events, seeing what new things are happening. And coming back and, and putting those ideas in place into your business, most of it's going to fail, uh, but some of it's going to pay off really well. Um, in fact, one of the top CEOs that I know, that's that's what he does. He, he goes to these uh, weird events for the only function of uh, of to supply new blood, or in in the sense of new ideas to to work on for the next six months or so. And most of those projects go nowhere, but uh, but but when they do pay off, they pay off massive. So it's, it's essentially running your own venture capital portfolio within your business. All right. I think, guys, that's probably a nice wrap-up for this episode. 
Again, I hope you guys got value out of this, and if you have any other questions you want us to cover in future episodes, let us know in the comments so we can do such. Yeah, thank you, and uh, bye for now. Leave a five-star rating. <laughs>